five years. <laughs> it looks like hell. Wow. We've been rather busy in your absence, Mr. Freeman. The Source Engine gives us capabilities in four main areas. Believable and realistic human beings, graphics that were previously impossible outside a Hollywood movie studio, an integrated <coughs> materials and physics system that create an unprecedented level of interactivity, and artificial intelligence that welds all these things together into an experience gamers have never had before. A huge number of details go into creating a character like the G-Man. His eyes glint based on a radiosity calculation of the local illumination. They self-shadow and follow you as you move. He has 40 separate muscles in his face, and his emotions are based on a taxonomy of facial expressions created by Dr. Paul Ekman, a research psychiatrist. This same system that gives him attention, Mr. Freeman. I'm only going to say this once. It allows him to speak. And he can do it just as easily in any other language as English. <laughs> the character technology gives us a broad emotional palette to draw upon. So you'll really hate your enemies in Half-Life 2, fear for yourself and your friends, and maybe discover a few new feelings along the way. <laughs> so with characters who react emotionally and are so expressive, we need a world that's similarly flexible and interactive. The world of Half-Life 2 is very dynamic. Any surface can have its displacement map altered dynamically along with its collision model. The world is also built out of materials. So if something looks like wood, then it sounds like wood, scrapes like wood, floats like it, and if you shoot it, it'll fragment like wood. Materials in the physics system interact with each other, so a set of steel drums floating will behave exactly how you expect. <laughs> Didn't think this would be complete without a giant pachinko machine. <laughs> you can have constraint based. You can have flexible models interacting with complex surfaces. There's no limitation on the complexity of those interactions. So it's this level of believable and consistent interactivity that opens the door to a wide variety of new gameplay mechanics. And this will run on my 486. <laughs> no comment. The graphics of the Source Engine are based around shaders. The same approach used to render movies like Toy Story and Monster Bay. The walls here are actually bump map subdivision surfaces. If you look closely at the water, you can see it refracts merged objects and properly incorporates a Fresnel term to modulate the surface reflectivity. Here you get a sense of the wide variety of visual effects that are possible with these sorts. <laughs> restrictions in the source on how you can use these effects. For example, you can take one of them and apply them to a human character, effectively building them out of water. The source also gives us complete control over the outputs and inputs of the system, which we can use in some surprising ways. So that's 
been our technology of overview of the source engine. Now let's look at Half-Life 2, the game. sitting ducks unless we can get this thing running. Come on, Dr. Kleiner, is it going to work or not? Now, now, there's nothing to be nervous about. Let's see. A massless field flux should self-limit, and I've planned the medical parameters to this base. Now, it's just wonderful. Oh, do be careful. <laughs> <laughs> we should just cut our losses. Listen. Scanners. That's it. We gotta get moving. Here, Gordon, take this. Let's get out of here. This is too late. It's too late. Run! Oh, fuck. Here we're in an old part of town outside City 17, one of the main locations in Half Life 2.
get some of your allies fighting alongside you. Remember when we thought Black Mesa was as bad as it could get?
Hey. There are quite a few wide open outdoor areas in Half-Life 2. The combination of the physics system and the terrain system make for some pretty interesting gameplay.
Well, well, isn't this just like old times?